There are two means by which species go extinct. First, a limited ability to reproduce. For example, the last two white rhinos remain on a conservancy in Kenya, but they're both female, and so they cannot reproduce. They are functionally extinct already. Humans do not face this problem, obviously. There are nearly 8 billion people on Earth, and I don't see anybody slowing down the increase in the human population on this planet. Rather, the second means of extinction is almost certainly the one we face, loss of habitat. Once a species loses habitat, then it is in the position that it can no longer persist. We have managed to persist in artificial environments, sometimes for very long periods of time. The International Space Station comes to mind. McMurdo Station in Antarctica comes to mind. But bear in mind that the materials humans need in each of those places comes from Earth. The food, the water, the ability to persist in those environments is a direct result of the food and other means we need to survive here on Earth. So we extend our habitat artificially for short periods of time into other environments. What does it mean to require habitat? Humans obviously are animals and we require habitat just as other organisms do in order to survive. I'll turn to a paper in the peer-reviewed Wildlife Society Bulletin by Linnea Hall and colleagues published in the spring of 1997 issue of Wildlife Society Bulletin. And I quote, we therefore does define habitat as the resources and conditions present in an area that produce occupancy, including survival and reproduction by a given organism. Habitat is organism specific. Habitat is the sum of the specific resources that are needed by organisms. Whenever an organism is provided with resources that allow it to survive, that is habitat." End quote. Without all those materials that we need to survive, that any species needs to survive, that species goes extinct. This applies to human animals as well as to other organisms on Earth. Earth is rapidly losing habitat for humans right now. A paper by Raymond and colleagues in the May 8, 2020 issue of Science Advances in, titled The Emergence of Heat and Humidity Too Severe for Human Tolerance indicates that people are dying as a result of high wet bulb temperatures. Wet bulb temperatures result from the combination of high temperature and high humidity. The result of living in such conditions is often organ failure. And this organ failure is what leads to death of human beings. It's already going on right now in many places in the tropics and subtropics throughout the world. On July 1st, 2021, Zhao et and others published in the Lancet Planetary Health an article titled Global, Regional, and National Burden of Mortality Associated with Non-Optimal Ambient Temperatures from 2000 to 2019, a three-stage modeling study. Zhao and colleagues, and there were many, wrote in this peer-reviewed article that more than 5 million people die each year due to non-optimal ambient temperatures, and almost always those non-optimal ambient temperatures result from high temperatures and high humidities at specific locations. So it's already happening. People around the globe are already dying as a result of lethal wet bulb temperatures leading to organ failure. This is not something for the future. It is something we are facing right now. One of the, dif the difficulties we have as human organisms is our inability to understand the exponential function. We are in the midst of exponential climate change. 
the rate of increase keeps increasing. And so we do not face the rapid rate of environmental change that was faced by previous generations. What we face is much faster, much worse than previous generations have had to deal with. I'm going to show a very short video that describes the exponential function, one of the more difficult concepts for humans to deal with, because throughout the history of our species, we haven't had to deal with exponential changes in almost anything. We can almost always predict the near future based on the recent past, but not in the case of the exponential function. So here's the short video. Everybody knows about playing with dominoes, but what you may not know is that a domino can knock over another domino, which is about one and a half times larger. So what I have here is a chain of dominoes. Each one is one and a half times larger than the previous one. And the smallest domino is about five millimeters high and one millimeter thick. And I will carefully place it. And there are 13 dominoes. And the largest domino, it weighs about 100 pounds and is more than a meter tall. Ready? Boom. That was 13 dominoes. If I had 29 dominoes, the last domino would be as tall as the Empire State Building. So you can see that the exponential function has great importance for our species, especially when it comes to events such as abrupt climate change. We are in the midst of abrupt climate change, which means the exponential function is now in play. I'll quote from a couple sources to indicate that we are in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change. Not only is the climate changing in exponential fashion, but it appears that we are faced with irreversible climate change at the same time. So, first I quote and Andrew Y. Glickson, the famous paleoclimatologist who works in Australia and, and lives there as well. This is from the October 9th, 2020 book, The Age of Consequences. Quote, during the Anthropocene, greenhouse gas forcing has risen by more than two watts per meter squared, equivalent to more than two degrees C above pre-industrial temperatures, which constitutes an abrupt event over a period not much longer than a lifetime. Think about that for a minute. The exponential change in this case is occurring at a very rapid rate, much, not much longer than a human lifetime. And Glickson indicates that we have already exceeded the two degrees Celsius above the 1750 baseline that we've been warned about for a very long time. Secondly, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in their September 24th, 2019 report concluded that climate change is irreversible due to an overheated ocean. Why? Because the ocean is overheated and there's nowhere for that heat to go. When the ocean releases that heat into the atmosphere at a rapid rate, as is currently going on, our entire environment is subject to rapid rate of heating, of a rapid rate of temperature increase. This from the IPCC special report on the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate, again published September 24th, 2019. So we're in the midst of a mass extinction event. We are in the midst of abrupt irreversible climate change that is driving that mass extinction event. The ongoing event is typically typically referred to as the Anthropocene mass extinction event. As was pointed out by the United Nations Environment Program in August of 2010, quote, Earth is in the midst of a mass extinction of life. 
Scientists estimate that 150 to 200 species of plant, insect, bird, and mammal become extinct every 24 hours. Every day, an estimated 150 to 200 species go extinct. This is nearly 1,000 times the natural or background rate and is greater than anything the world has experienced since the vanishing of the dinosaurs nearly 65 million years ago. The rate of environmental change is proceeding far too rapidly for almost all organisms on Earth to keep up with, according to this report now more than 11 years old. The Secretary of General of the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity said upon release of that report in August of 2010, quote, no country has met its targets to protect nature. We are losing biodiversity at an unprecedented rate. If current levels of destruction go on, we will reach a tipping point very soon. The future of the planet now depends on governments taking action in the next few years." End quote. This is more than 11 years ago. We did not take action within the next few years. Rather, we have proceeded to heat the planet even faster than at any time in human history over the course of the last decade or so.